back in everyone's favorite place in my dorm, the bathroom. But we're here to review another episode of NXT 2.0, and so we have a new champion. We had an amazing opening contest, a great debut, and Toxic Attraction thinking that they could run NXT when they totally can't. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talk Dressing, where we are reviewing last night NXT 2.0, and we are starting right now. was that that freaking contract for the breakthrough tournament you could it literally works like a money in the bank i had no idea and i was so confused and i texted bill and i was like this contract can't work like a money in the bank like what is this and he goes no it can and i go oh so we'll start with that this is also how we kind of kicked off NXT. So obviously it was Isaiah Swerve versus Santos Escobar because Swerve is going up to that main roster so he had to lose the title. But I think how we pictured he'd lose the title. What? Yeah. This is what you get for not going in the lounge. Now I get to bully you. There's a hole in their bathroom! The point was to bully you, Kimmy. Did you not hear me? Yes. That's what you get for not going in the lounge. <laughs> Every day she does this. She goes in the back. No! Yesterday! I filmed in my room! Sweetie, that's so good. I'm keeping this in, by the way. I love it here. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted! <laughs> so, basically... Um, Swerve and you know his hit row, welcome to the building. And he's with B Fab and one of the other members of the tag team. And um, Santa Escobar and his crew, Lagaz and Asma, captured hit row. And Swerve is like in the zone, so he's not paying attention. And Swerve's like, oh my god, all my friends are gone. How did this happen? So, with that being said, it made perfect sense. Okay, Santos is probably gonna win. You know, now that Hit Row can't interfere. Makes sense. That's not what happened. So, this match is going on in the main event, and, um, match is going on, and then Carmelo Hayes and his bodyguard dude come out and are beating up the members of Legal Duff and Tasma. Swerve gets the win, but NXT is not over because Hayes cashes in his breakthrough contract to challenge Swerve for that North American Championship and we have a brand new champion. I'm really excited. I was really high on Hayes when this whole tournament started and he is really good. I like I didn't expect it to happen tonight. I thought we were really gonna wait or maybe Hayes was gonna challenge for a different title. But I'm excited to see what he does for it. I'm actually really disappointed that Swerve didn't kind of get the I get the North American title run that he deserved because this was the first time he defended since he won the title. But it's because of that that I actually think that Swerve is going to beat Shinsuke Nakamura for the IC title when he gets his back down. So if that happens, you heard it here first. But from there, we go to Ciampa versus Joe Gracie, which was a really good match. It didn't make sense for Gracie to win. I knew he wasn't going to, so I was really happy Ciampa won. And like I said, the match was really good, but the end of it kind of confused me because Harlan, aka Parker, B, Brock Lesnar 2.0, y'all know who I'm talking about, <laughs> attacks Ciampa <laughs> and Gracie at the end. So like, are you putting Harlan in this match with Ciampa after Halloween Havoc? A little confused. <laughs> Um, I don't know, but Ciampa won, and then Ciampa was cutting, you know, a backstage interview, and he's so excited to be debuting at Halloween Havoc, couldn't think of a better debut at Halloween Havoc than defending his NXT Championship against Braun Breaker, Grizzled Young Veterans is like, oh, like, you think you're such a champion, like, whoop de doo you're so special, and look at us, you know, Grizzled Young Veterans, every single time they've had a tag team title opportunity, has yet to win, and Braun Breaker comes to the end, and Braun's like, look, Although I'm facing you in two weeks of Halloween Havoc, I want to make sure I'm wrestling you at your best. So until Halloween Havoc, I will be at your side. So next week, if they can go along, if they can get along, which is just a please 
phrase of 2021 if, if we can coexist. So it's Braun Breaker and Tomasa Chapa next week against your girls of young veterans. Why? Why do we keep doing this? Like, no. As we discussed yesterday on Monday, no, we can't get along. But Ivy Nile, oh my god, so I worked with Marina Shafir a couple weeks ago and she told me like Ivy was really good. She was like, look out for Ivy, like, she, you're like you'll really like her. And I was so impressed. This was actually her first ever match because she wasn't on the Indies or anything. She came straight from Titan Games and straight from, you know, with The Rock. You know, Dwayne Rock Johnson. So I was impressed to see what she would do and she, you could just tell like she just fits right in. I'm really excited to see what she does do. I don't expect her to challenge for the Women's Championship right away, but I could definitely see that in her future. So I'm excited for that. Go check out this match. Highly recommend, even though it was maybe like five minutes. But Toxic Attraction. So the one thing I did notice was like the first three segments were very back to back to back. So, you know, Chompa and Gracie, like that ended and you could already see the smoke and Toxic Attraction's music starts playing before Gracie and Chompa leave where we have a segue and then even that we segue straight to like the next matches like the next guy's entrance I was like why are we going back to back to back I mean I understood because usually NXT has the 8 minute layover to 10.08 but because Chucky was preparing right after they didn't have the 8 minute layover so they were trying to condense all the time that they had but it was very sloppy in the beginning but basically, Mandy Rose lays out the challenge, saying that no matter what happens, she is still the baddest bitch here. Thank you for taking Britt Baker's catchphrase. <laughs> and she is challenging Raquel to a match of Hell Queen Havoc. And it doesn't matter what color her hair is, she will prove that she is a true champion. And then JC and Gigi Dolan challenge for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships. But then also... You had Indy and her BFF also challenged for that, so I'm guessing it's going to be a triple threat match. Pretty exciting. But Raquel, so I forgot this was a thing, because I don't think I watched Halloween Havoc Live last year, because I think I was at a school then. There's a wheel, <laughs> and Raquel wants to up the notches, and we're going to spin this wheel for a stipulation on this match. So I'm excited to see, like I said, I didn't watch Halloween Havoc Live last year, I think I was at a school event or something, so I'm excited to see, I know how the wheel works. I'm excited to see the stipulation, and I really hope they use the wheel not just for this match, like, it's a two hour show because it's taking the place of our regular NXT episode, so they should use the wheel for more matches. Highly recommend NXT, please listen to me. But NXT was really fun, it's getting, you know, I'm getting used to all of the new names because there's a lot of people I don't freaking know, like all of you, but it works. And NXT 2.0 is actually becoming pretty good. I think this was the best episode of NXT 2.0 that they've had actually. But that's it for me, so there's no dynamite tomorrow. So I actually... So, I don't know the next time you'll see me, because Friday and Saturday I'm working. So I don't know. You might see me for a dynamite review, but definitely not a Rampage or Smackdown review. But yeah, that's it for me. And I'll see you